Today on UI7 Newsbreak, the presidential candidate makes his way to the U of I campus and draws an enormous crowd. Plus, an activist group gathered on campus to protest for higher education funding. Also, it's the beginning of briefing season for this Q panel. Your UI7 Newsbreak starts right now. From the Richmond Journalism Teaching Studio at the University of Illinois campus, this is your UI7 News Break, your U of I news source. Hello, I'm Corey Drake. And I'm Steffi Drucker. We have breaking news from the White House this morning. After a long wait, Obama has declared Merrick Garland as his nominee for the ninth Supreme Court Justice. Garland is the chief judge for the United States Court of Appeals in the D.C. Circuit. He will possibly replace the past conservative Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia. Republicans have made it known they would not support Garland as a Supreme Court Justice. Republicans must confirm Garland because they control the Senate. Obama says the decision is now in the hands of the Senate, who have responsibility to do their job and take this nomination seriously. Taking a step away from the White House, hopeful presidential nominees have been rallying around the country. Potential presidential candidate Bernie Sanders visited the University of Illinois campus this past weekend. UI7's Abraham Koshy spoke with some of the students and community members who showed up in support. Thank you. In case, in case. There was an eager mood on campus as students started queuing up in long lines to be a part of the senator's rally. The line to see him started in the early hours of the morning and students like Edison or Alana are just excited to host a potential presidential candidate on campus. If this guy ends up becoming president and I didn't come to his rally today, then I would have kicked myself in the pants for the rest of my life. Senator Sanders' approval rating with millennials in the polls is much higher than that of his competitor Hillary Clinton. Sophomore Summer Khan thinks his rhetoric and approach are much more appealing to college-going students. Sort of like grandpa-ish. <laughs> Um, persona to him and he seems to really care about you know our education and how we have to really struggle to pay back debt after college. Young people weren't the only one showing up in support. Meet John Howard. He was the first in line at 3.30 a.m. This is Bernie. Yeah, we wouldn't do this for anybody else. The enthusiasm ran high as local political leaders Carol Ammons and Tulsi Gabbard set the stage for Sanders who eventually also stepped outside to greet a cheering crowd of students who hadn't been able to fit inside the recreation center. In Urbana, Abraham Koshi, UI7 Newsbreak. The UIUC campus was feeling the burn on Saturday. Although Bernie Sanders may not have been the state's winner for the state's Democratic primary, there is still an obvious fandom in Champaign. Bernie Sanders came to speak at the Activities and Recreation Center this past Saturday. Students and city locals came out by the thousands. Champaign fire officials say there, that there were well over 20,000 people in attendance, and only 3,600 would fit in the room where Sanders spoke. That didn't stop people from enjoying their time in line. The line went all the way down Peabody and wrapped around 4th Street. The wait was then rewarded as Sanders came out and spoke on the front steps so that everyone had the chance to hear him. Join us now to discuss the expense of a college education is Amelia McGavro. Thank you, Corey. The cost of higher education is rising, and so is the stress it is putting on students. Here, how people from all over the state are speaking out. Who's got the power? We have the power. Who's got the power? We have the power. Students and faculty across Illinois raised their voices this weekend. The Campus Faculty Association hosted a public rally in response to the crisis facing higher education. Karen Olowu has found herself personally affected by this crisis. Now, she's speaking up, wearing a simple graduation robe and handcuffs, sending a deeper message. The shackles are supposed to represent bondage. They're, they represent the opportunities that we were promised that we've been denied. Students at the University of Illinois are facing these financial strains with loan debt and high tuition costs. The lack of a state budget is not only affecting the U of I campus, but it's also directly affecting students of public institutions all over the state. Now they want to send their message straight to the Capitol. Campus representatives came from multiple universities, such as Chicago State, 
Western, Eastern, and Parkland to get the attention of policymakers. So we are organizing. That's what we're, like. we're trying to let them know. This, this event was the first of many, the first of many, where we have multiple groups from around the state coming together and preparing to do some real damage. Aloe says she is going to continue the fight for her education. The only time progressive change has ever occurred is when people demanded it, when people demanded change. In Urbana, Amelia Gavro, UI7 Newsbreak. Although the cost of education is rising, people were still interested in touring the University of Illinois campus this past weekend. Open houses around the campus showcase exactly what the university has to offer. Over 30,000 admitted students and their family members attended events held by the Colleges of Business, Media, Engineering, and Agricultural Consumer and Environmental Sciences. ACES students in the Stock Pavilion showcased the university's agricultural offerings. Attendees held the chickens and milked cows. Engineering students used fun interactive ex ex uh, exhibit exhibits excuse me, to, distribute, to demonstrate their work on the opposite end of campus. This year marks the 96th anniversary of the Engineering Open House. Admitted members of the class of 2020 have until May 1st to accept their offer of admission. After the break, find out why some students spent their entire night in the armory this past weekend. College education? What are you gonna do? Graduate and take some office job? Be like everybody else. Or will you dare do something different? Like be a teacher. You could be my teacher. You got the skills. The smarts? Yes, you. You could be the teacher I never forget. That would be cool. Does that corporate job even have recess? What are you gonna make of yourself? What are you gonna make of me? Don't worry, the 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play at least 60 minutes a day. Okay, time for the team obstacle course. Yay! What this place needs is more healthy kids. To get involved or donate, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. Did you know kids who play outdoors have healthier lungs? Totally. Did you know that boys that play with dolls make better husbands? My son has lots of dolls. But did you know terry cloth diapers breathe better? I did. Mm -hmm. It's totally true. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you guys know statistically friendly kids have more friends? Yeah. That's obvious. Did you know most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. <clears throat> hey, Hard, what's this? That's my resignation letter. You're resigning. Why? Because you're constantly ignoring me. You're half as active as you used to be, and you eat stuff like this. You've been putting me under a lot of pressure lately. That's why I'm ready to quit. I, I forgot. I'll, I'll do better. Please, don't quit on me. OK, but remember, it's not what you say. It's what you do. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Let's go for a walk. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. Several rape counseling centers throughout Illinois today are without a single penny of state funding. UI7's Jenny Horn explains how the Rape Advocacy Counseling and Education Services Center in Urbana is able to stay open. The Rape Advocacy Counseling and Educational Services in Urbana is officially here to stay. Although they have struggled to keep their doors open, volunteer coordinator Stephanie Ames discusses how vital the community's help has been to races. We had originally said in January that our doors could close at the end of March, and we know that we can go longer than that now, so that's been really encouraging to, to see the support from the community that made that happen. Last week, sorority and fraternity members came together in Lincoln Hall Theater to spread the word of the Races Center facing possible closure. Social work volunteer Haley Lakin says students need to be aware. The state of Illinois should be ashamed that they cut funding for something like this. It should be kind of like, in my eyes, an embarrassment to our state to cut funding for even the name, like Rape Advocacy Center, to cut funding for something like that it just seems like something that... Illinois should not be proud of. <laughs> the Racist Facility has been a non-profit organization for nearly 40 years. However, they were hit with the devastating news they might have to close after the state budget impasse. The state budget cut nearly 50% of their funding. The Racist Center is thankful they no longer have to face closure. 
Well, we're still at reduced hours. Okay. Um, we're still only open Monday through Thursday, 9 to 4.30, and that probably won't change for quite some time. Um, while we have the funding to keep our doors open, we may not necessarily have enough to go back to regular staffing. Um, so that's something that is going to continue. In Urbana, Jenny Horn, UI Relay Center for Life extended throughout Relay for Life extended throughout the night, but there wasn't just walking going on at the event. Girls made donations of something very precious to them that will make you feel hope. A line of anxious girls waited to donate their hair for cancer Saturday night. They found comfort in knowing that they are donating their long locks for a good cause. Most of them have been directly affected by cancer through their parents, friends, and grandparents. Some of the girls didn't plan on donating their hair and wanted to surprise their cancer-fighting loved ones. Others did it in front of their beloved cancer survivor. Thyroid cancer survivor Linda Stawick was emotional after seeing her granddaughter donate her hair. I love every minute As people of do. my life because I'm not young anymore. But I keep going and, and things like this happen. But good doctors and, and a positive, like she said, a positive outlook. And that's what I have. That's what we need. As people do minor acts of kindness, firefighters do more by risking their lives constantly to keep us safe, and the Champaign community is finding a way to honor these heroes. The Champaign Fire Department and Champaign Exchange Club honored three men as recipients of the 2015 Firefighters of the Year. Lieutenant William Painter, Engineer Cordy Morovic, and Firefighter Matt Bulios were recognized at an award ceremony Monday at O'Charlie's Restaurant. The honorees got to enjoy food and fellowship with friends and family. The fire department gave each honoree a gold plaque and invited the men to speak. Lieutenant Painter said firefighters are resilient because they need to roll with the punches and complete their tasks regardless of the difficulties they face. In other news, it's the season of kids for one local dairy goat farm. Kelsey Litchfield explains how one local farm welcomes baby goats and volunteers during this time of the year. It has been a baby boom for Prairie Fruits Farm and Creamery, located outside of Urbana. We uh, started our breeding in the beginning of October, and it runs essentially through mid-December. They're pregnant for five months, and so kidding season starts for us typically the beginning of March or end of February. The farm has welcomed over 100 La Mancha, Nubian, and crossbreed kids in just a span of three weeks. After removal from their mothers, the babies are fed colostrum and bottles for the first few days after they are born. Afterwards, they are trained to drink from the bucket feeders and gradually move to the self-feeders. With more kids than people, it was decided to get more help. We couldn't do it without our staff and our volunteer uh, kidding program volunteers, and we started that three years ago. Many volunteers come to Prairie Fruits Farm and Creamery to help feed the kids. Some may come from a farming background, but others are experiencing this for the first time. Many kids like this one takes a lot of volunteers. From animal science students to community members, Prairie Fruits Farm and Creamery has volunteers to help feed three times a day. Volunteers arrive at the farm and pour milk into the bottles to feed to the kids. Like humans, the bottles are warm to room temperature. Assistants then take the milk to the newborns, which gives them a chance to interact with the animals. It's really interesting. We got to see the, the brand new one that was about an hour old. That was pretty neat. And yeah, it's fun to feed them. In Urbana, Kelsey Litchfield, UI7 Newsbreak. So a reminder to our viewers that we're going to be off for the next two weeks for spring break. Corey, do you have any fun plans? What are you doing? No, I'm just going to be here uh, working on stories, getting on the community and finding what I can learn and report news on next. Very nice. Getting ahead of the game. What about you? I'm going to London, actually, with the College of Media. So, very exciting. I've never been there before, but mm -hmm. it's the number one place I've always wanted to go. Have you been on the plane before? Yes, I've been on a plane before. I've been to Europe, I've been to Israel, but I haven't been to London, which is, like, my number one. So, I'm very excited. It's going to be super fun. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and like... It's more of a media-focused trip, so we're going to be taking a tour of the BBC, in addition to doing all the major tours, places like Westminster Abbey and all that. Oh, that sounds awesome. Yeah. Well, that is all for UI7 News Break. Thanks for watching and have a great day and a great spring break.